you know. Okay. Sorry, just started the recording. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So uh, some minor updates on faster uh, uh You can find the links in the minutes. Um, the refactored um, learning methods. So that's now now it's simpler to write custom learning methods for like non-standard, like non not just the basic supervised learning tasks. And there's a new tutorial on um, the variation autoencoder that I made together with Kyle. And the other thing is uh, some internal refactorings, which moved all the domain-specific functionality. So currently, computer vision and um, for tabular data into their own submodules. Um, kind of cleaning up and the, the file structure, making it more decoupled and uh, giving the opportunity to maybe in the future uh, decouple the domain specific parts from the core library. Uh, haven't done that yet, but maybe like if they grow um, or if there's more domain specific, um, like other domains being added, that might make sense to reduce loading time and and uh, decouple some stuff. But yeah, that's kind of it on the fast AI side. Yeah, also had a money good. Care, so you joined. Yeah. Yeah, Lorenz just gave an update on um, some minor fast AI stuff, the links to which are all in the agenda, if you wanted to look at that. Yeah, I mean, the API I think has gotten a lot better. The, the autoencoder example is a lot shorter um, than it was when we first demoed the initial release. Yeah, and no more hacky method overrides. Like it's all kind of a... Uh... It's now the there's a way to do it, and that is the correct way. And uh, it's quite short, actually, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think most of the you know tutorial is um, explanation and not like the actual code itself. Yeah. Um, great. Yeah, I think. Um, the only other thing was I kind of wanted to bring this on the radar for everyone who is part of this group, just so people know what's going on. Um, so, I mean, the whole ML data pattern refactor thing is something we had wanted to do, I'd say, basically two years back now. And just because of time issues and um, the complexity of the code base that just never ended up happening. Um, one of the, so I guess this new package that we're calling ML utils is kind of um, a prototype ground where we're going to start from scratch instead of trying to port over the current packages. Um, and so, We'll so port over, it'll still be a port. We'll move over pieces from ML data pattern bit by bit. Um, but we'll, we won't have any limitations in terms of backwards compatibility. So, which is where, which is where most of the issues were coming up when we were trying to refactor the original code base is trying to maintain as much of the original functionality or have some kind of deprecation path for it. Um, yeah, and so we're instead going to start this new package. And then once it's completed, we will um, push all of its changes over to um, ML data utils, which is, let me post the link. Um, this is kind of the umbrella package that wraps up all the Julia ML uh, data preprocessing packages into, into one front end. And so we're going to replace this entire front end with 
um, the code that we come up with in the ML utils package. I think that's the plan. And what are like the, like what is the extent of functionality? Like would it have everything that is that is already in ML data utils just with like slightly different API and more streamlined? Um, well, I guess the thing that we haven't talked about yet is the ML label util stuff, which to be honest, I don't really see a lot of value in that package itself. Um, but so I don't know that that's something we haven't discussed is how much of the ML label utils functionality will be there. Um, mm -hmm. But and for the ML data pattern stuff, yeah, it'll have basically everything that's currently in ML data pattern. And then um, for now, at least the interfaces themselves will be, will be in the same package. So uh, learn base ML data pattern and ML label utils will kind of be archived and frozen as they were before we started doing any refactoring. So for people who are using that, and I don't think there's really many packages that extend this interface, but for users at least that are, are using those packages, they'll remain the same. But ML data utils will basically have this new interface. Um, and eventually we'll probably move some section that, that interface and maybe some uh, core utilities into like a separate leaner package, but we're not prematurely splitting things up uh, at this stage, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw you referenced uh, fastair.jl also in the minutes. Um, I mean, it's been a, also a, a plan since the beginning kind of to um to port some of the utilities in in fast AI over like you you're probably referencing the like transformations like map ops mm -hmm. group ops yeah yeah so in that issue that i linked in the in the agenda um i'm just posting the link to the issue um yeah, there's one checkbox on there that's about um, porting stuff like map obs, that kind of thing to um, to ML data pattern. Instead of porting it to ML data pattern, we would port it to this new package. All right. And uh, what about the data sets? That, the plan Just for that the, is still the, the... ML data sets. Right. Yeah. But without the domain specific loading functionality, right? So just the data depths. Well, it'll, yeah, it'll have the data depths for the data sets themselves. And then it'll also have like um, a, a low level API. So it'll have like some of the data containers that are in fast AI, like the file data set we would move that over to, um, to ML data sets. So ML data sets will basically provide some kind of low level API for um, generically interfacing with certain types of data sets and yeah. then implement the uh, data sets like MNIST or whatever on top of, on top of that API. Yeah. And um, I mean, I think in terms of the fast, like even I don't see why the why we couldn't move the table data set, for example, over to ML data sets as well, because there's lots of tabular data sets in ML data sets. Um, right. I mean, there's there's I mean, there's some like custom methods for automatically loading like CSV files and uh, data frames. Uh, some some extra handling there that maybe we won't don't want to take a dependency on CSV or data frames into ML data sets, but um, the base container probably. 
Right. That's right. just uh, dependent on the tables.jl interface. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm happy to help with that, getting stuff out of fast AI and into the respective packages, I think is a good idea. Um, same with the, like also kind of making it more composable. That's also why I moved the domain specific functionality out of the main module, maybe we'll into separate packages. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'll, um, I was thinking right now, Carlo um, is doing all the porting stuff and he's moving pretty quickly. Um, so I was thinking what we could do is have uh, an issue just for um, kind of this uh, stakeholders like Carlo, you, me, Brian, um, Milan, um, to kind of just look over the code base because Carlo's move, merging the PRs pretty quickly. So it might be a good idea for all of us to just do a, a review and say, yeah, I have no major issues with the code. And then once we're settled on the MLU till stuff, um, you know, I mean, it's not stable, but relatively stable, then we can move, know what the interface is gonna be to move over um, any of the uh, fast AI data set stuff. Yeah, that sounds good. So I can open up some issues and then tag the appropriate people um, on the various packages. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, and Brian wrote that Milan Bushevala would be open to coordinating Julia ML and Julia Stats. Uh, what's the What's the overlap? So I'm not very familiar with Julia stats. So the the main issue is like um, conventions for where the observations are in in certain types of uh, data storage. So conventionally, rows of a matrix would be considered the observation dimension. But with Flux and pretty much anything that's machine learning in Julia, um, we have the very last dimension being the observations. Um, yeah, true. So, and, and one of the major changes with the new package is that we're going to drop the obsdim uh, keyword completely. Well, we're going to drop the obsdim type. That's that's something we were always planning on doing. Now we're not even going to have a keyword. It's basically going to be if you have an array, um, it'll we're we're going to basically be opinionated and assume that the observation is in the last dimension. Um, and so, if you want the observation to be, let's say, in a different dimension, you would. Um, well, that, that part we haven't settled on, but like you could have like a each could slice iterator. Hmm? You can pass it like you can pass in something like a permuted dims array. Right, right. Basically, yeah, some wrapper. Everywhere. Right, exactly. Some kind of wrapper that uh, makes it look like the, dim the last dimension or whatever dimension is the last dimension. And then, um, or you can wrap it in some kind of like a slice iterator that makes it look like a vector of samples. Um, yeah, right. So, right. And then there's like PRs to Julia itself for adding kind of a, we already have each slice, um, but having an actual type that lazily encodes this, um, this kind of behavior. I mean, there's a PR for that to base Julia itself. So, um, I mean, probably whatever we settle on, I feel like we'd wanna do it in a way that's com 
future compatible with that, that we can kind of just switch out the, um, the type once that gets merged into base. Um, yeah. I mean, and there's I like- Having it encoded into the type uh, it's more flexible than having a, a new keyword argument everywhere. Exactly. Or I mean the existing, to make sense to um, cut out the opstim argument. Right. Um, yeah. I guess, yeah, those are the major changes going on with that stuff. Um, I don't think we missed covering any of it. Um, I guess, Brian and Manikya, did you have any other last thoughts on that? All right. Um, well, I guess that pretty quick meeting uh, to start off the new year. Yeah, happy new year, everyone. And uh, yeah. otherwise, I guess we'll see each other either next week at the ML dev call or, or two weeks from now at the next community call. All right, cool. Thanks for joining and uh, see you soon. Yep. Bye, everyone.